So you see here how you can regulate the different turbine speeds on for the south side. We can also do the same for the valves that regulate the water flow into the turbines and so on. Huh. Never thought you'd need so many computers for just one take. I guess Dipole Dam is a lot more complex than you thought. Oh, what is that? Sh shut up for a second and let me look. Oh no, this isn't good. There's a leak. Hello? HQ, we've got a leak here at the Lake Vanderbilt. Got it. Sending people to your location now. Can you give us more details? Not at the moment. I'll send someone to you once I have more information. Alright, good. So, where are we running to again? We need to get to the monitor that measures the lake. Okay, what are we gonna do with it? Well, we should find out how much water is leaking out so we can relay the information to HQ. All right, let's open this panel and see what we have here. Well, I sure hope we didn't run for nothing. Is there anything we need to know prior? Hmm. Well, the lake itself is in the shape of half a sphere, and the rest of the variables are here. Math! All right, so here's what we know. The total volume is half of a sphere, four-thirds pi r cubed and that the radius of the lake is decreasing half a meter per second. And according to the monitor, the radius is currently 150 meters. Right. So now we need to find the rate of change of the volume. Oh yeah, we have to derive. Exactly! We can start by simplifying the volume equation and changing the constant to two-thirds. Yeah, because it's half a sphere. From here we can take dv dt, which will be... 2 pi r dr dt? Oh god, how can you mess up such a simple derivative? It's 2 pi r squared dr dt. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. We can plug in the variables to get the rate the volume increases at, which will be... 22,500 meters cubed per second. Time to get this to HQ. Come on, Oxford. Okay. So I need you to relay this information to the workers that are on top of the dam at HQ. I'll follow you up there so you don't mess anything up. Gee, thanks. This thing is pretty old, Sid. Oh, don't get all gassed up. Just climb. Get it? Because you're a gas. <laughs> okay. We're falling! How fast? Math! All right, let's hurry. So the ladder's 125 meters tall. But isn't it at an angle? Of course. It was resting at 100 feet up initially, too. But now I have no idea, and by the Pythagorean theorem, we can find the rate at which we're falling. Oh, I know that one by heart. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But how exactly are we going to find the rate if we don't know all the variables? The power of right triangles, of course. How could you forget? We can draw out a right triangle and label our variables. The ladder itself can be C, 125 meters. And we can make B the distance from the bottom of the wall to the top of the ladder, which is 80. Now we isolate A, right? So A equals the square root of C squared minus B squared, or the square root of 125 squared minus 80 squared. So A is 96.049. That's a lot of decimals. I think we're sliding at a rate of 2 meters per second, too. Now... You might want to hurry up there. Okay, so, take the Pythagorean theorem and take the derivative. So, we can forget that since the ladder's length isn't changing, the rate of change is going to be zero. So, we'll plug in our variables and viola. So we're falling at a rate of 1.666 meters per second? That doesn't seem that fast. But it feels pretty fast. Oh, the ladder stopped. Now how are we gonna get down? Oh, we could jump down? I don't know about you, but jumping that far down onto concrete would probably break my bones. Right, we need a soft surface. Hmm. Maybe we could use a compound. How about sand? Right, let's bond. We did it! But now, how are we going to get this information to the workers? Bra, 
I'm a gas. I can fly. Remember? Wait, if you were a gas, why couldn't you just fly us down here in the first place? You're fat. You can't carry me. Oxford, 